Good day everyone. In this video, we will be discussing principles of software engineering practice. Let us first discuss some of the terms that we will be using in order to understand better the topics being discussed. First is principle. A basic idea or rule that explains or controls how something happens or works. Second, software practice is a broad array of principles, concepts, methods, and tools that you must consider as software is planned and developed. Number three, software process provides everyone with a roadmap for getting to a successful destination. Fourth, practice provides you with the details you will need to drive along the road. And lastly, coding tasks, the direct creation of programming language source code. The next slides we will be discussing different principles that software engineers should follow during software development. Let us first discuss the eight software process principles. Principle one, be agile. This means that whether the process model you choose is prescriptive or agile, and every aspect of the work you should do should emphasize economy of action. Keep your technical approach as simple as possible. Principle 2. Focus on quality at every step. This means that the exit condition for every process activity, action, and tasks should focus on the quality of the work product that has been produced. Principle 3. Be ready to adapt. Process is not a religious experience. When necessary, adapt your approach to constraints imposed by the problem, the people, and the project itself. Principle 4. Build an effective team. Software engineering process and practice are important, but the bottom line is people. Build a self-organizing team that has mutual trust and respect. Principle 5. Establish mechanisms for communication and coordination. This means project fail because important uh, information falls into the cracks and the stakeholders fail to coordinate their efforts to create a successful project. These are management issues and they must be addressed. Principle 6. Manage change. Principle 6 means the approach may be either formal or informal, but mechanisms must be established to manage the way of changes. Principle 7. Assess risks. Now, there are a lot of things that can go wrong as software is being developed. It is essential that you establish contingency plans. So you should have plan A, plan B, plan C, and so on and so forth. Principle 8. Create work products that provide value for others. Now this principle means that you should create only those work products that provide value for other process activities actions or tasks a list of required functions and features will be passed along to the person who will develop a design the design will be passed along to those who generate code 
and so on. So those are the software principles or software process principles. Let us now discuss the principles that guides the framework activity. First is the principles that guide practice. Now, software engineering practice has a single overriding goal, which is to deliver on time. High-quality, operational software that contains functions and features that meet the needs of all stakeholders. Now, here are the following set of core principles that are fundamental uh, to the practice of software engineers. Principle 1. Divide and Conquer This state that in a more technical manner, analysis and design should always emphasize separation of concerns or so. Principle 2. Understand the use of abstraction. This means that at its core, an abstraction is a simplification of some complex element of a system used to communicate meaning in a single phrase. Principle 3. Strive for consistency. A familiar context makes software easier to use. So stick with same notation. Principle 4. Focus on the transfer of information. This means that pay special attention to the analysis, design, construction, and testing of interface, uh, which makes the transfer of information. Principle 5. Build software that exhibits effective modularity. Separation of concerns or princi uh, like principle number one, which is divide and conquer, establishes a philosophy for software. Modularity provides a mechanism for realizing the philosophy or well-defined components. Principle six, look for patterns. Uh, Brad Appleton, Appleton sorry, suggests that the goal of patterns within the software community is to create a body of literature to help software developers resolve recurring problems encountered throughout all of the software development. Principle 7. When possible, represent the problem with its solution from a number of different perspectives. Now, by doing this principle, uh, it will eliminate possible errors. And lastly, principle 8. Remember that someone will maintain the software. So those are the eight principles uh, that guide practice. We now go to the principles that guides the framework activities. The next principles that we are going to discuss are the principles that guides the framework activity. Namely, communication, planning, modeling construction, and deployment. Let us now discuss each principle for each activity. The first principle is communication principles. Let me zoom in. Principle number one or one, listen. Try to focus on the speaker's words rather than formulating your response to those words. Principle two, prepare before you communicate. Spend the time to understand the problem before you meet with others. Principle 3. Someone should facilitate the activity. 
Now, every communication meeting should have a leader or a facilitator to keep the conversation moving in a productive direction. Okay, second, to meditate any conflict that does occur. And number three, this is why you should have a facilitator, is because you have to ensure that other principles are followed. Principle number four, face-to-face -face, uh, communication is best. But it usually works better when some other representation of the relevant information is present, like maybe or probably a drawing. Principle number five, take notes and document decisions. Someone participating in the communication should serve as a recorder and write down all important points and decision. Next is Principle 6. Principle 6, strive for collaboration. Now, collaboration and consensus occur when the collective collective knowledge of members of the team is combined to describe product. Principle 7, stay focused, modularize your decision or discussion. Okay. The more people involved in any communication, the more likely the discussion will bounce from one topic to the next. So, it is the role of the facilitator okay, to organize the discussion during meeting. Number 8 or principle 8. If something is unclear, <laughs> draw a picture. No need for further explanation for that. Number 9 or principle number 9. Once you agree to something, move on. Okay, move on. If you can't agree to something, move on. If a feature or function is unclear and cannot be clarified at the moment, again, move on. Principle number 10. Negotiation is not a contest or a game. It works best when both parties win, but still will need compromise from both parties just in case there is no agreement. So you should compromise. So those are the 10 communication principles. Next is the planning principle. So, let's, let's discuss them one by one. There are 10 planning principles. Okay. So, the first principle is understand the scope of the project. Now, it is important or sometimes impossible, sorry, impossible to use a roadmap if you don't know where you're going. So, the scope provides the software team with a destination. Okay, so you should have a goal. Number uh, Principle number two, involve the customer in the planning activity. Now, the customer defines priorities and establishes project constraints. That is the reason why they should be involved during software development or planning in this case. Principle three, Recognize that planning is iterative. A project plan is never engaged in stone. As work begins, it is very likely that things will change. Principle 4. Estimate based on what you know. Now, the intent of estimation is to provide an indication of effort. 
cost and task duration based on the team's current understanding of the work to be done. Principle 5. Consider risk as you define the plan. If you have identified risk that have high impact and high probability, contingency planning is necessary. Principle 6. Be realistic. People don't work 100% for every day. They can make mistakes. Principle 7. Adjust granularity as you define the plan. Granularity refers to the level of detail that is introduced as a project plan is developed. It may be high or low. Principle 8. Define how you intend to ensure quality. That is very important, the quality of your work. The plan should identify how the software team intends to ensure quality. Okay, so technical review schedule, peer programming, etc., etc. These are some of the things that you should consider to ensure quality of your software. Principle 9. Describe how you intend to accommodate change. Now, every, yeah, sorry, even the best planning can be obviated by uncontrolled change. So, have plans for customer requests. So, just in case they need to change something, you can adapt. Principle 10. Track the plan frequently and make adjustments as, re as required. Now, software projects fall behind schedule one day at a time. So, therefore, look at the plan daily. Keep track. Okay? Keep track of your progress. So, those are the 10 planning principles. The next is the modeling principles. Now, we create models to gain a better understanding of the actual entity to be built. When the entity to be built is software, our model must take a different form. It must be capable of representing the information that software transforms, the architecture and functions that enable the transformation to occur, the features that users desire, and the behavior of the system as the transformation is taking place. In software engineering work, two classes of models can be created. The first one is uh, requirements model or also called as analysis model. Now, the requirement model represents the customer requirements by depicting the software in three different domains okay the information domain the functional domain and the behavioral domain okay second class is design models okay so the design models uh, represent characteristics of the software that can help practitioners to construct it effectively. So, this includes the architecture, the user interface, and component level detail. Now, each of these class models has their own principles. Okay? So, let us discuss them one by one. Okay, let's go to the principles of requirements modeling. Okay. Let me zoom in so you can see it clearly. Okay, principle one. Uh, the information domain of a problem must be represented and understood. So this means that the data that get e that gets you should know the data that gets in and out. Okay? Principle two the functions 
that the software performs must be identified. So you should know or there should be a clear okay, uh, definition of what the program or the software has to do. Principle 3. The behavior of the software as a consequence of external events must be represented. Okay, so this is important. Number 4. Or principle 4, the model that depicts information, function, and behavior must be partitioned in a manner that uncovers details in a layered or hierarchical function. So this is where divide and conquer will be implemented. Principle 5. The analysis task should move from essential information toward implementation detail. Okay? So, those are the requirements model principles. Now, we go to the nine design modeling principles. So, let's discuss them one by one by zooming in. Principle number one, design should be traceable to the requirements model. So, this means that the design model translates requirements model into an architecture. Principle number two, always consider the architecture of the system to be built. So, this is the skeleton of the system, okay? Principle number three, design of data is as important as uh, design of processing functions. Uh, this means that the way the data objects are realized. Principle number four. Interfaces, internal or external, must be designed with care. Now, this makes integration and testing easier. Principle number five. User interface design should be tuned to the needs of the end user. However, in every case, it should stress ease of use. Principle number six. Component level design should be functionally independent. Focus on one and only one function. Principle 7. Components should be loosely coupled to one another and to the external environment to reduce error propagation and increase maintainability. That is the purpose of principle number 7. Principle 8. Design representations or models should be easily understandable, both for coders and testers. Principle number nine. Last principle. Design should be developed iteratively with the each iteration the designer should strive for greater simplicity, like all activities for refinement. So those are the nine design modeling principles. The next principle to be discussed is the construction principle. Now the construction principle activity encompasses a set Okay, of coding and testing tasks that need two operational software that is ready for delivery to the customer or the end user. Okay, core code uh, coding principles and concepts are closely aligned programming styles, programming languages, and programming methods. So this means preparation, programming, and validation. Okay. Next is the testing principles okay, uh, and concepts.
Now, testing principles and concepts uh, lead to the design of tests that systematically uncover different classes of errors and to do so with a minimum amount of time and effort. So, let us first discuss what we should do. Okay, the, pre the preparation principles. Okay, so here are the preparation principles. Before you write one line of code, be sure to okay, understand of the problem you are trying to solve. Next is understand the basic design principles and concepts. Pick a programming language that meets the needs of the software to be built and the environment in which it will operate. Next, select a programming environment that provides tools that will make your work easier. And lastly, create a set of unit tests that will be applied once the component U-code is completed. The next is decoding principles. So as you begin writing code, be sure you, okay, you should follow. First, constrain your algorithms by following structured programming, okay, practice. Second, consider the use of pair programming at as uh, been discussed in the uh, uh, earlier uh, topics. Next, select data structures that will meet the needs of the design. Next, understand the software architecture and create interfaces that are consistent with it. Another, keep conditional logic as simple as possible. Next, create nested loops in a way that makes them easily testable. Next, select meaningful variable names and follow other local coding standards. Second to the last, write code that is self-documenting. And lastly, create a visual layout that aids understanding. Lastly, let us discuss validation principles. Okay, so here are the validation principles. Okay, after you have completed your first coding pass, be sure you first conduct a code walkthrough when appropriate. Next, perform unit tests and correct errors you have uncovered. And lastly, Refactor the code. We now go to testing principles. Okay. So here are, let's go back to the principles. There are five principles, testing principles. Okay. So Al Davis suggests the following principles. Okay. Let me zoom in. Principle number one, all tests should be traceable to customer requirements in addition to structural tests okay, about the logic. Principle number two, tests should be planned along before testing begins. So even before any code is generated, okay, so tests should uh, begin, should already begin. Principle number three, the Pareto principle applies to software testing. Okay? So, what does that mean? So, a, it means that 80% of errors uncovered will be coming from 20% of all program components. Next. Principle number four. Testing should begin in the small and progress toward testing in the large. Now, individual components first, then integrates system. 
Lastly, principle number five, exhaustive testing or exhaustive testing is not possible. Okay? So again, exhaustive testing is not possible. So those are the five testing principles. We now go to the last principle that we will be discussing in this video, which is deployment principle. Now there are five deployment principles. Uh, let us now discuss them one by one. Principle number one, zoom in. Okay, customer expectations for this software must be managed. So too often, the customer expects more than the team has promised to deliver. And disappointment occurs immediately. <laughs> Principle number two, a complete delivery package should be assembled and tested. Okay, a CD or probably other media containing all software documentation should be assembled. Principle number three, a support regime must be established before the software is delivered. An end user expects responsiveness and accurate information when a question or problem arises. Principle number four. Appropriate instructional materials must be provided to end users. This means that troubleshooting, guidelines, differences, documentations, etc., etc. And lastly, last principle in the deployment principle, principle number five, Buggy software should be fixed first, delivered later. Now, do not send software with some bugs and say those will be fixed in the next release <laughs> because they never get fixed. Okay? So, that concludes this topic. Thanks for watching and listening.